106.7 K-Rock, K-R-O-Q, it's the Almost Acoustic Christmas, night number one. Wow. That's why Lincoln Park is so big, Mike Shinoda. The farting sounds you can make with your pretty little face. Dude, I'm so happy to be here right now. Yeah? Because it's all about you guys and this fire on the television behind you. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't get a real fireplace with such a big show, such a big production. Right. It's a zoning problem. Really? You, look, we're on the back lawn of Universal Studios. Movies and magic is made here, so we thought we would make fake magic. Oh, it's like a special effect. Yes. Okay, and that, when you put it in that light, this thing is amazing. Look at that. The shark is going to appear pretty soon right in front of us on Fantastic. my side of the tram. Yes. Phoenix and Mike from Lincoln Park, everybody. <laughs> Dr. Drew is right next to don't, me. I'm striker. You guys don't curse. No, no cursing. Yeah, foul mouths. Those are foul mouths. Yeah. I, I was actually listening to you on the way in, and you guys sound huge. I thought you were like broadcasting out front with like a thousand people. What, what are you talking about? We are. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the magic of radio. I just killed it. There's like 20 people. It's the best backstage they're, they're ever, though, because people are watching Rise Against on, yes. and this backstage is, is mellow but nice, and everyone's hanging I, out. I have to admit, yeah. actually, you guys kind of messed up my little vibe. I was over there watching them play, and I had to come over here and talk to you. When the, I wasn't going to do it, but then they said it was Dr. Drew. And right. That was that. Right. right. Yeah. Right. They, they, they didn't tell me you were going to be your striker. Right. Right. Otherwise, I you would have stayed up there. Yeah, probably. Right. Hey, can I ask you uh, a question? <laughs> yes. Jackass. <laughs> Technically, you did you, just ask some questions. I love Stryker. Stryker. If people if people don't know by this time who listen to K Rock, if they don't know I love Stryker, then they're, they're not listening often. It's been a nice relationship. But I remember the year, and I remember I remember when you guys opened up Almost Acoustic Christmas, and mm. then the next year you guys closed it. Talk about your first experience, though, at Almost Acoustic Christmas. Wow. You know, somebody just reminded me the other day that. Um, W wasn't when we played when we opened acoustic uh, that that acoustic Christmas at one time hadn't our record just come out yes. or was it was about to just come out you I had think just it was out already love line in fact we just and for I, the first I time and I remember the reason I remember it because it was them and at the drive-in those were wow. the two opening bands right and we were I have to tell you very impressed with Lincoln Park. Not so much with the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, so I will sad. not forget you. Not that. so much. <laughs> I, I love that man. Right. Lincoln I Park mean, is good. Not. Like, but, but we remember when you got really liking you guys, and then wishing you the best. And when when they got up perform, we thought, great, great guys, great band. They're going to be hugely successful. And lo and behold, <laughs> I knew Zero was going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Yes. So were you yes. nervous, or did you that day? And com compare that to now is the question. Phoenix. Yeah, I think we were pretty nervous. And uh, for sure, hopefully we played it off pretty well. But I was actually thinking about that exact same thing today, and you know now it's just like old hat. My wife, as we're driving in, is like, "How many times have we done this thing?" You know that whole thing, and we just roll in. We're veterans. Right, you are Mike? just intent on blowing the magic of this night, aren't you? Every aspect but, of the excitement but, and the, the, here, the mystery and romance of here's it is the gone. payoff. Here's the payoff of that: is that whereas six, seven years ago it was a really nerve-wracking experience. Now it's actually enjoyable, you know, one, because you guys are here, we can talk to you, of yeah, course. Yeah. But also, uh, like tonight, we have a lot of really cool things planned with our set that we would have never yes, been yes. able to do yeah. earlier. show of the year wow. actually so we just came home from a really big tour in um in asia we did we did the first or i'm sorry the biggest international rock show in the history of china wow, wow. bigger than where? menudo in 88 dude where it was bizarre we, we, we played shanghai yeah. and when we got in they told us they told us that this is going to be you know really big this is big how many for us how many? it's over twenty five thousand. it was like thirty thousand. it was it was a stadium show 80,000, um, Mike. 30,000 in China is a potential revolution. Right. Yeah, well, but happen. that was the thing is that yeah. they were like, they were like, you know, you don't understand. Like, yeah. we, the closest thing we've had to this, the last rock show from a, from a band who happened to be from the U.S., who I won't mention, was 10,000. Wow. So this was almost was three it? times Rolling Stones. And Stone. the gathering before Stone. that was what? Tiananmen Square. Yeah. It was, well, right. and that was the thing is that they literally had, they had, um, 
national like soldiers and security guards lining the interior of the venue every about, about like every six feet you know and they all had to stand at attention in their like communist green and wow. and red uniforms and everything and we actually caught them like halfway through the set we caught like a bunch of them like nodding and like tapping their foot and their superior officer would come over and yell at them and whatever and they'd stand back up but they were everyone was having a good time you nice. know they knew that at a certain point it wasn't going to go to riot it wasn't going to go bad so we just came home off of that and this is our last show we're like buzzing off that we're just it's here like the last day time. of school so you're gonna yeah, go bananas exactly, today exactly we're gonna, all right we're last gonna ditch last two words. don't ditch don't <laughs> di last two questions mike from lincoln park and phoenix from lincoln park uh, one answer what do you want for christmas your underwear. Okay, I can. They're soiled. Uh, Phoenix? Just by your having said that. Right. <laughs> Drew! I'm into you. Phoenix? World peace. World peace. Not right. too much to ask. It's Lincoln Park, Phoenix, and Mike. Congratulations Are on everything. Are you trying to make me look bad, dude? What's up with That's the world? That's my pageant peace? answer. I don't God. know. If I used to do pageants when I was awesome. growing up. All right, Mike. How come do you think most Americans cannot find North America on a map? Well, it's because we don't have um, maps. And because, um, I, what's the catchphrase? What's the catchphrase? She kept saying something about Africa, the Iraq, the Iraq, Iraq. because the Iraq and the U.S. don't have maps. I start to sound like a, I'm imitating George Bush now, huh? Can't be prudent at this juncture with Lincoln Park. It's uh, almost acoustic Christmas. This Lincoln Park is closing down this mother effort. Drew Stryker, enjoy K Rock. <laughs>